Hello everyone, I'm Lorenzo, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to have a look at what is Kerbal Space Program. And specifically the new version, look here in the bottom right corner, it says version 0.24 and then some other numbers, but the 24 is what counts. It's the newest update in this indie space program game. My regular viewers will know very well what the game is about, but this video is targeted for everyone. So I'm gonna go through it, explain what this amazing game is all about and why it's my favorite game of all time. It is in fact so much my favorite game that I found out if I start up the game with the sound turned off, my computer sound turned off, I still hear the menu background music, the menu background music, I still hear it, even though the game's all topped and booting up in the background, and then when I turned on the sound system it was exactly at the right spot, so that's possibly troubling, but this game is amazing, that's the point I'm trying to make. Basically what it is, it is a full sandbox, do-it-yourself space program game, and ever since the version 0.24 update hit, it is actually that. The update added uh, funds, uh, rewards for successes and failure, uh, penalties for failures, which uh, weren't previously implemented. It was just a sandbox rocketry simulator builder game, which is awesome enough in and of itself. Um, but now it's got funds, contracts, and risk and reward. We'll go into the game and have a quick look. Um, yes. You get three choices here. Sandbox is what it implies. It basically gives you everything in the game at once and, well, basically says good luck here you go do whatever you please in career there is money and science involved and with science there's just science involved the budget then is uh, virtually well no practically infinite you get all the money in the world so we'll start the game it's important to note that this video is not a review I already stated it is my favorite game this is going to be a very very biased appraisal of this game and I'm going to give you an affiliate link that if you use to buy the game will give me one or two dollars. Uh, this won't cost you anything and um, it is not a money-making scheme or anything. This is not making me a rich man, but I just thought I'd say it so that the intentions are clear. I, am, uh, I have nothing but praise for the game and therefore my opinions may be a little bit too rosy. Anyway, this is the center that the game starts you off with. You get a variety of buildings. You can see a landing strip, or more accurately, a runway. This is used for taking off, as is the launch pad over here. Mission control, or actually the tracking station, is where you get an overview of space. The planet here is Kerbin, its moon, another captured asteroid in the form of Minmus, and if we zoom out further, we get the local solar system. It's slightly reminiscent of our own. The Kerbin planet looks a lot like Earth. Then we have Eve, which is relatively similar to Venus. Moho here, which resembles Mercury. Juna, Juna here, which resembles Mars. And then we have a singular gas giant in Joule. Elo might be Pluto. And Dress might be something like... Um, forgot the name. One of these asteroids. Ceres, the, one of these planetoids that is orbiting in between Mars and the outer solar system. Nothing else in the game yet, but this is plenty of stuff to go. thing to note is that everything in the game is scaled down by approximately a factor of 10, so the planet is a fair bit smaller than the actual Earth, as, the, as is the entire solar system, just to keep things playable. For instance, an orbit around this planet takes about 8 minutes instead of the real life. 90 minutes keeps things a little bit playable. So, let's get back to our mission site, our launch center, the Kerbal Space Center, otherwise known as the KSC. We have two vehicle construction buildings, the space plane hangar, in which you make space planes, and the VAB, the vertical assembly building, or vehicle assembly building, no one ever knows quite sure which it is. We have the astronaut building here, where we get some astronauts, we can hire them, let's do that, just get a few. That is a feature that's currently in this alpha state of the game, mostly in there for uh, for flavor and um, variety. It doesn't really change anything apart from the names of the astronauts, obviously. Fairly recent addition to the game is the R&D center, in which you do your research and development. You get a bar here in the top that says that we currently have 0.0, .0 science points, so we cannot we cannot research this basic rocketry node. We just have to do we have to build our rocket with the start parts, and for that we move to the vehicle assembly building, where you can see a big empty hangar, and on the left we have tabs 
with rocket parts because in this game in the space program you don't fund a rocket and then it magically appears no you build it like you would with Legos so say you start out with a command pod you put some fuel tanks under that you can stack the fuel tanks so that they in effect become a singular larger fuel tank let's have like four of them and then you put an engine underneath there at least if you want to go up you do that this may seem fairly simplistic but rest assured as soon as these part tabs start filling up uh, there will be incredibly complex contraptions that will be possible um, for instance you can also make stuff like this where it clearly doesn't work um, because these are firing downwards I mean, if we turn them around um, I'm trying to turn them around yes there we go if you turn them around of course they go up and that's the direction we want to go all in all within uh, several hours of playing you will have hundreds upon hundreds of parts available here I'm just putting a parachute on the capsule so that our guy can parachute to safety basically what I'm trying to say is you can build many many different kinds of spacecraft let's call it a spacecraft save it and let's see about launching it now all these vehicles all these um, all these rocket motors parts and things have um, of course various modes of operation they can be online they can be offline and some of them can be something in between now to that end to manage that we have the staging bar in the lower right corner of the screen and you can add stages and that means you can basically activate parts on the fly in sequence so for now we'll put the boosters in the first stage the engine here the liquid fuel engine that runs off these fuel tanks in the second stage and then when everything's burnt out we will be using the parachute to well hopefully loft this back down to safety that done we have now we have a functional rocket all designed we can proceed to the launch pad and this is where the meat of the game happens basically the entire solar system is now simulated and the rocket we built in our sandbox construction environment will either take us somewhere interesting or horribly explode I mean all of it is possible really I mean let's fire it up we got some basic controls here at the bottom that a nav ball gives you the orientation a throttle here and a g-force indicator on the right some other stuff that's not really important as of this moment so let's launch this rocket you can see the boosters are firing we're going really quickly and I'm not steering or anything we're just rotating because of the uh, physics that are simulated on these parts on these joints they didn't happen I mean because of the the boosting force of these boosters the joints are being flexed and torqued a little bit and that's causing the rotation of this rocket com combined with of course aerodynamic drag that kind of stuff is all simulated and can lead to fairly wonky flight patterns uh, which is one of the fun bits of the game look there's the moon if we want to we could just go and fly there now our boosters have run out so let's fire the next engine which is here on the bottom of the rocket now it might occur to you that it could be a good idea to separate these and let them fall back to the planet just like real rockets do that now we could do that we need decouplers for that they are a separate part uh, we didn't have them researched as of yet so to that end we can ask Jebediah here our astronaut to do some research we click on the command pod we hit crew report which is a form of research and can then transmit that back now there's many more research things to do in the game but this is one of them you can ask your guys to give an appraisal of the situation now here in the top of the screen we have an altitude indicator a vertical speed gauge and an atmosphere display this gives you a quick idea of how thick the air around you is we're currently at 30 kilometers altitude going almost straight up at over a kilometer per second so we're gaining altitude pretty quickly it's good that we do because our rocket has almost burnt out here in the left side of the screen you can see our fuel is just about gone and we're just going over 50 kilometers note that this game simulates physics pretty accurately even though the engine is now off we're still continuing to travel upwards because well that's the direction our momentum was um, that's the vector of our momentum and that's um, not magically gone whilst the engine sh when the engine shuts off now we're also out of the atmosphere because in the game you have to kind of find this out but I can tell you the a atmosphere of the scaled planet here stops at 70 kilometers so we're at 94 kilometers and we are now in space 
And what I said before about the physics being fairly accurately simulated holds true even here, because getting into space and staying there, otherwise known as getting into orbit, requires more effort than just shooting straight up. See, if we go to the map view, which is another nice function of this game, will teach you about orbital mechanics in no time at all, you will see here our vessel, the spacecraft, and its trajectory. And you can see that that will quite unceremoniously fall back towards the planet. We have an apoapsis here, which is rocket speak for highest point, and that's going to 211 kilometers, which is well into space, but not into orbit, because to get into orbit, we would need to apply sideways thrust so that we actually circle the planet. Unfortunately, we have no rocket fuel available, so this rocket cannot do that. What we can do is take Jebediah on a quick spacewalk, and that is that's also a good demonstrator of the realistic physics. I mean, we can we can activate his jetpack and then stop it and see how he drifts away over the planet. Now, if we would just leave him here, he is still on the same trajectory as the spaceship because, well, he only squirted his uh, suit jets for just a little bit, so he will fall back to the planet himself just as well. In order to give him a fighting chance, we would have to take him back into the spacecraft so that he can use the parachute. But before that, we will have him take an EVA report, an extravehicular activity report, which will also generate science points. Now, he doesn't have an antenna on his suit, so we're going to have to keep the data whilst we rocket back to the ship. And that will then, hopefully, take him back down to the ground we must of course take care not to impact too quickly, we have to brake, because same as with the spaceship itself, momentum is conserved and physics are simulated. So let's board the ship and now all we have to do is wait. Now if you have followed any real life space missions, you might know that many months of waiting are in fact par for the course of a space mission. Now this game wouldn't be much fun if it made us wait all that time. I mean now we're not talking months, we're talking minutes, but still just staring at a spaceship, however nice it is, will get boring. That's why this game offers time acceleration so that you don't have to do that. I mean let's apply just a little bit of that. You can see time warp factor going up. We're now at 10 times regular speed. This is an incredibly handy tool to, well, make very long space missions easily um, easily doable in the span of a, a gaming session, typically something between 5 to f 5 minutes to an hour, really depends on where you want to go as well, and if you had the rocket already built. Once you go larger with rockets, that can be a game in and of itself. Well, while I've been speaking, I've reduced the time acceleration back to one time again, and we're about to enter the atmosphere again. The re-entry is a very hazardous part of any space mission, and you will see that the G meter here at the bottom, the bottom center corner of the screen, mm, the bottom center is not the corner, the bottom middle of the screen, the G-force meter will start to spike once we get into the thicker atmosphere, and then we ought to deploy our parachute as well. Jebediah is already crossing the 35 kilometer mark here and if his vessel survives the rapid deceleration we will be able to spend the science points and get some new parts so that we can make more interesting rockets and that's a big part of the appeal of the game look at that some nice spectacular uh, re-entry effects those are relatively new as well and here we see the g-force meter has spiked to over 10 g's but that did decelerate the rocket well you can imagine building your own rockets and flying them through space and then having them spectacularly re-enter is, um, well, those are already all the ingredients you would need to enjoy a massively awesome game. As you can tell, I'm quite liking it. Of course, there is lots more to do that than trialing relatively small rockets. As I said, there is a whole solar system to explore and recently, actually in the previous update, they added asteroids as well, where you can track, th track stuff and even interact with it and capture an asteroid into orbit, which incidentally is something that NASA, the real world space agency of the United States, is actually considering. So there are some relevancies, some links with uh, the real world. In actual fact, the actual agency NASA has collaborated with Squad, the developers of this game, to make that asteroid patch, that asteroid update a reality. So that is pretty awesome if you ask me. Now we're drifting back to the ocean on the parachutes. I'm using the time warp again to, well, 
hasten that a little bit. We can see the rocket touched down a little bit too hard. The parachute, the single parachute wasn't quite enough, but still the capsule did survive. So we can recover that, take it back to the space center and spend the science points. So here we get the report. This is also new in point 24. We got, you get the science report, you get money back for the parts that you brought back to the planet. And of course you get an overview of the crew that hasn't horribly died this mission. Now. Um, I forgot to spend the science, let's quickly do that. There we go, we can now unlock this science node as they are called. And let's see, I want one that gives us the decouplers, this one as well. Well that wasn't quite good enough, but we got a decoupler anyway. We got a stack decoupler. That means we can now build a simple two-stage rocket, and let's do just that to show you how that can increase your chances of rocketry success and what what further sandboxy elements that unlocks. You see we now have some extra parts. We can put the engine here, we can make a decoupler and then we can add just a plethora of boosters. I mean that seems like a good idea surely. Now. If, for instance, you were to make a little... Well, no, let's... We're not going to fool around with two crazy rockets. Just disregard everything I said. Here we go. We have a simple rocket, two stages. Staging bar here has some boosters and an engine here. And let's launch that. We have new technology to explore the stars. Isn't it wonderful? So, we can fire that off, that's a pretty powerful uh, ascent, you might not always want that. These are things that can and need to be tweaked in that vehicle assembly building as well. But what is important is I want to show you the, the staging mechanism where you can make incredibly... Oh, look at that. Well, some of our engines exploded due to overheating, that's something. That's a thing that also happens. Um, and we can, in just a little bit, separate this booster, drop it away uh, with our brand new unlocked stack decoupler. Look there we have a brand new rocket. And that's one of the one of the tools that allows you to make very very versatile rockets. And of course you can then steer them through the atmosphere. Now what I forgot to do here is to make a parachute on top of the capsule. So there's no way, at least if we burn out the rocket, that Jebediah is ever going home again. So we are going to abort the mission and try and land this on just the engine because we wouldn't want Jebediah to die. I've just accelerated time to times 4 speed and we'll wait until the rocket reaches the earth and then we'll, we can attempt a powered landing and I can show you that because that's usually a fairly hectic affair and should be fun to to show you. Now, if after seeing this you have become very enthusiastic about this game and want to play around with it, it's something that I can inc uh, wholeheartedly recommend. It's very nice to do. It's a nice sandbox game. There's a construction element, there's an exploration uh, element, there is a trial and error um, learning element, and there's a genuine educational element because you will pick up stuff about orbital mechanics. There's two things you can do if you want to see more of this game. You can of course go ahead and buy it. Um, that's the easiest way to proceed. You can um, I'll supply the link in the description of this video. You can go ahead and buy it. It's $27 at the moment, even though it's on, st on Steam sale as well, fairly regularly. Look at that. Oh, that's that's almost a landing. The rocket did explode, but that was almost a landing. Well, there's Steam sales occasionally, but go ahead and use the link underneath this video uh, where you will support me by buying it. It's um, It makes me a dollar or two, if I calculate that correctly. It doesn't cost you a thing extra, so well, that would be the nicest way to proceed. But what you can also do is get the demo that's on their website as well. It's an excellent representation of the game. doesn't have all the features, but uh, gives you a sneak peek for free, so to speak. And if you're more of a watching kind of guy, not really want to play the game, but observe videos just like this one, you can check out my YouTube channel. It's got several KSP-oriented series. It's got KSP to Mars, which uh, strives to add realism to the game because don't get me wrong the simulations are accurate and it will teach you about rocketry but there are some shortcuts that make the game playable and easy and fun I take them away and do it the hard way 
and I made this YouTube series of that, so check that out on my channel. There's also the KSP contracting one, not so much focused on realism, but more on having viewer interaction, so you can build your ships, send them to me, and I fly them, and there's some really crazy contraptions there. Um, we usually have a blast. Subscribe to my Twitch feed to see the live streams, or just buy the game and get going yourself, because the moon is out there, it's waiting for you to visit it, as are all the other planets. Uh, this was Kerbal Space Program, version 0 0.24. Uh, go ahead and play it. I'm Lorenzo. Check out the channel, hit subscribe, follow it, watch all the videos, do whatever you like with your day. I hope it's an awesome day. I'm going to strive and have one as well. It's always good to do that. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around. Goodbye.